Hi, this is Darren Lyle. As you can see, I've gone ahead and modeled the clothes and accessories of our little character here. And in this last video of the character modeling series, I want to just go over some of the tools and techniques I use to create, say, the helmet, the shirt, the boots, and those kinds of things. So let's take a look at how we might do this. I'm going to go back to an earlier version of the character, kind of where we left off in the last video. And for the helmet, what I did is I went into face mode and I just selected the faces that I thought would be close to what the helmet is. In other words, um, say I look at my side view here and um, I'll just use maybe the circle select tool to click and drag and select faces here. One thing I did is I, I got rid of the ears to work on the helmet. All I did for this is um, just selected these ears. So I'm going to hit delete and then I'm going to come over here and fill these um, holes here. So how to do that? Well, we can do it pretty easily by just say extruding over and then merging our points. So I'll take that edge and move it over. Maybe scale it down so I can see the points. And then in vertex mode, we can just select these points and with Alt-M choose at last. And Alt-M, at last, Alt-M. All right, so now that we've done that, Let's go back into our uh, side view, and with the circle select, I'll just select faces, at least the ones that are close. What I will do is come over here to duplicate, right here, or shift D. Now, what you can do is use either the push-pull tool or the shrink fatten tool to kind of expand your selection out away from the body. So I'm going to try shrink fatten here. I'm just going to click on that and move the mouse just a bit. And that will allow me to expand that object out a bit. Something like that, let's say. And then press the P key to separate the selection out from the object into its own object. And there we go. So now it's its own piece. So if I select that piece, I can rename it, call it helmet. And now it's a matter of reshaping so that it looks like the helmet. So I'm gonna go back to the side view and maybe press Shift H to isolate it. Um, and now we could uh, begin either extruding or pulling points to get the shape of the helmet the way we want it. So maybe I could bring these points forward a little bit. So anyway, that's the beginning of the helmet. The next thing I did is give it a little uh, thickness. And the way to do that is with the solidify modifier. So I'm going to come over here to the modifiers and choose solidify. And there's a uh, thickness setting here. I can slide that to increase the thickness a bit. So maybe I increase the thickness to there. Now the next thing I should probably do is apply the solidify modifier, but um, the mirror modifier may make things a little um, strange. Because if I applied it now, see how the mirror modifier is acting a bit weird here? Let's apply that mirror modifier and then apply the solidify. And now we get something that looks like that. Now, I lost some of that thickness, but what we can do here is insert edge loops to hold 
that thickness when it's smoothed. And so I'm going to press Control R. And once I get an edge loop in here, I'm going to scroll the um, the mouse wheel once to add another cut in there. And I'm going to then click the mouse. Now, if we look at it, and hopefully, let's see what happens. Now when we um, turn on the subdivision modifier, we have a better edge on that. So that looks good. But the problem is, if we were going to come in and UV map this, what we did is we created a whole bunch of work for ourselves um, with all these faces inside the helmet. So what let's do is let's just get rid of these for now. Um, I'm gonna go to my circle select tool and just select these faces on the inside to get rid of them, okay? So now there he is with his silly little helmet. Now, <laughs> he looks kind of silly. Now, yes, there's a lot of work that has to be done in terms of shaping and getting the helmet the way you want it to look. And be sure and do all of that work before you apply the solidify modifier. Get it to the uh, thickness or shape that you want do any other pieces like the little tails here and then apply the solidify modifier after that all right so let's take a look at something like the shirt here for the shirt the same thing applies all i did was go into face mode and select the faces that would be the shirt. So I'm just going to select, um, I'm gonna select some faces here and press control plus arrow and expand the selection a bit. So what I did for this, same kind of thing. Um, I took these, duplicate, and then immediately Go to the Shrink Fatten tool and expand it a bit. There we go. And then press the P key, separate by selection, and there we go. Now I'll rename this shirt. Now another thing I did is split the front of the shirt so the placket or the uh, front one side can overlap over the other and kind of make it look like a, a button-down shirt. And to do that, I need to split these edges down the middle. But um, what I need to do first is apply this mirror modifier. So I'm going to apply that. And I can't do that in edit mode. So I'll go to object mode and hit apply. And then now I can select these edges and go to my edge menu with control E and choose edge split. And that will split up these two sides of the shirt here. So now I can take, say, one side and move it under the other side, like so, and get that overlapping look to the front of the shirt. So let me just go back here and you can see I've got, let me isolate the shirt here. So you can see how I've got the front of the shirt overlapping. And you can see how I've also used the solidify modifier here, inserted edge loops to hold that edge. And then once I'm done, I go into the inside of the object and delete those inside faces. Now the pants, what I did here is all these are, or these are the actual legs of the character. So I didn't even bother uh, duplicating faces and splitting them out for the legs. I just modeled the legs. What I did is I used the edge split tool to split the legs off from the upper body. And then I just selected edge loops 
and used uh, scale to kind of expand the legs or expand the pants out and give it these kind of um, hint at folds and uh, wrinkles in the pants. So those are the actual legs of the character. The only remaining parts of the original body are the uh, hands and the head. So I've actually deleted everything else um, out of the body. So I don't need it. I'm not going to have him change clothes or anything. And when it comes to rigging the character, it will be a whole lot easier because we'll just have one layer of clothing um, rather than the skin and then the clothing on top. Lastly, let's talk about the boots here. These are made of uh, multiple objects. Um, and let's, let me isolate this with Shift H. And let's talk about this here. The bottom of the boot or the sole, all this is is just a cube extruded back and then with um, edge loops. So all I did was begin with the cube up front here, inserted an, an edge loop down the middle of the cube, and then just extruded back to the heel. I then lifted this back piece up and extruded down for the heel part. And then I inserted edge loops along the top and bottom here to hold the edges when I added a subdivision surface modifier. So the shoe laces are an interesting trick. Let's take a look at these guys. These are actually paths. Um, let me isolate one here. And if we go over to the path tab over here, we can see that it's got, it's a, it's a path with a, a depth and resolution increased. If I look at it here, it's got quite a bit of resolution, but here it is, here's the path, the, the original path. So let's take a look at how to do that. What I'm gonna do is just come over here to path, construct a path. Then if I go to edit mode, I can take these points and I can move them around. And you can see the curve of the path happening here as I move these points around, right? Now the cool thing is, is you can also take one of these points and hit extrude and extrude new parts off of this path. So I'm just hitting E and extruding off of here. So you can begin to get some very cool uh, paths very quickly. Now what you can do from here is under this path tab here, you can come into the bevel area and under depth, I'm just going to click and drag and that will begin to create some depth on the on the path, but it's only half of it, as you can see. You need to change the fill from half to full, and now you've got the beginning of a nice path there. To make it more rounded, you would increase the resolution here, and that will give you a nice tube. In addition, what you can do, if I take the resolution back down to zero again, we can come over here to the modifiers tab and add a subdivision surface modifier to it. And that will also round it out. So that's a quick rundown of just the tools and techniques I use to model the clothes and accessories of this character. Um, this is the last in the character modeling series, and I think from here what I'll begin is um, some videos going over UV mapping the character and then using Blender's uh, texture painting to begin adding color and texture to him. So I hope this has been helpful for you. It's certainly been a lot of fun for me, and um, I hope to see you soon on the next one. Thanks for watching.